What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me on The Art and the Artist. I'm your host, L.A. Phil. On this episode, I got to speak with South Florida-based surrealist artist Don Gabe. His use of space and silhouettes contrasted with a dreamlike color palette and the diminutive size of some of the subjects of his pieces evokes a sense of solitude and isolation, almost like you're getting a look into the most secluded parts of his soul. While solitude can sometimes lead to loneliness, it also offers a sense of freedom. The same freedom that allowed Don Gabe to become the artist he is today. So without further ado, I present Don Gabe. All right, what's going on, everybody? Uh, I would like to welcome Don Gabe to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of your work. You know, and we're going to get in a little bit more in depth. First, we're going to get to know you a little bit. Uh, so you're born and raised in South Florida. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you go to college in Florida also? Did you always stay kind of local? Yeah. Yeah. I've always been in Florida. I haven't lived anywhere else. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. You know, I, I'm an LA dude. I, I've been in LA too, you know, my, my whole life. So yeah, I, I get that. How has South Florida, just your environment in general, had an impact on the way that you create art? I think for me, my surrounding really hasn't influenced my work really. Um, I'm not really, I don't really live around Miami or anything. So yeah. that sort of local scene hasn't influenced me really. Um, my, my art is really just influenced by my own, mm -hmm. my own mind. My, 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 my surroundings don't really influence me at all. Okay. Okay. All right. So would you say then that maybe inspiration for art is maybe more internal? and more what's going on in your head than as opposed to, you know, everything else that's around you? Yeah, I, I would definitely say so. Um, majority of my work really just comes from any dreams I'm having or okay. any one-off idea that I have. That's really mm -hmm. where it comes from. Okay, you know, that makes sense too. Because when I look at your work, I was looking at your print shop. I got, it's almost like I'm looking into someone's dream, you know, like like it's a whole nother world. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Did you know from a young age that you were artistic? Did your family and friends around you know that? Or was that something you kind of kept to yourself? I think they always, from a young age, I, I remember always drawing whatever favorite cartoon characters or superheroes okay. all the time. And as I got older, as I got better, I would show my family my work. I'm like, hey, dad, check this out. And mom, take a look at this drawing, see what I've done today. So I'm pretty sure they always know from a young age. How long have you been a, a full-time artist? Like when, when did you make that leap and, and tell yourself, okay, I'm, I'm going to pull the trigger right now. Like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, so I've been like the online art world and in my art career for over a year now. Okay. And I'm not full-time. That's what I want to do, but I'm not oh, there okay. yet. Okay. But um, that really started um, last year in March. Um, some hiccups happened around in, in, another career career field that I was doing and I wasn't really happy where I was. Yeah. And I always knew I wanted to do art, but I never really knew where I wanted to take it or what I wanted to do. Okay. And then one day I just kind of had enough of yeah. being in the job I was in. I was yeah. like, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. There's not there's never a good time for this. So I might as well just go for it now. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I that's that's a great way because yeah, you can't just be miserable doing something you don't want to do. Exactly. And you're sitting, sitting there thinking about, okay, I, maybe I can be an artist, but then you're at some job that's just sucking the life out of you. I, I know exactly how that feels. That's exactly uh, how I felt. It was like that for like a couple months. And I was just like, you know what? I have these ideas. It's, it would be a shame if I just kept it to myself and just yeah. not share it with, it with the whole world to see. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, that's great. That, that's awesome. A lot of people are, are, are too afraid to do that. And you know what? I want to say this for you to not be exclusively a full time artist. You've got everything set up perfectly. You got the website, your open sea, your, your print store that I'm surprised that that you had time to do all of this and, and still not be a full time artist. That's impressive. Man. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so did you go to co college for art or were you studying something else? So I originally went to college for graphic design. That's where my background is. Okay. And I have I did graduate with an associates and I'm currently in school from to get my bachelor's for art. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's great. 
Okay, so were you always? Uh, well, I guess when you're younger, you're you know you're drawing. Did you always know that you were going to go the digital route, or or do you also do um, like more traditional paintings as well? Um, I'm strictly a digital artist. I have dabbled in other mediums. Um, I have dabbled in film photography. I've okay. gotten to that because of school, and I'm actually like really falling in love with it. All right. Um, since I was young, I always figured I would. So actually, one of my dreams as a kid was I wanted to be a comic book artist. Okay. That was like yeah. one of the things I've always wanted to do. And then I discovered Photoshop and digital art. I'm like, yeah, okay, this looks pretty cool. And then into high school, I started learning more about Photoshop and getting into graphic design. And that sort of led me down the path of where I am now. How does your family feel about you going the art direction? Did you get any pushback and maybe them wanting you to have a more traditional job? My family has always been supportive of everything I've ever done. So oh, I'm very right. blessed and lucky that they've supported me on everything. Um, there may be some like some sort of doubt because, you know, I'm not sure. exactly where I want to be yet with with this. Um, but I can completely understand that, you know, they just want what's yeah. best for me. And, you know, of course, I got to have a job to, to pay the bills before yeah. I can get <laughs> successful off of this, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great. It's good to have family like that, man, because it's it, I'm sure it could be lonely when you don't have that family support. That's beautiful. OK. So are there were there any artists that you followed or maybe that uh, that inspire you to create? Now, I'm, I'm not saying copy that. That's not what I'm saying. But I know there's a lot of artists that, that look up to other artists and maybe want to incorporate some some of what they see into their style. Yeah. So before I started my art career, um, there was this artist that I found on Twitter called Frank X Town and their work was incredible. I never seen anything like it before. And I was like, how are you doing this? This is, this is amazing. Like, look at this, look at the detail, look at the, the colors. It's fantastic. And then when I started developing my own style, I'm like, you know what? I, I kind of want to take what they're doing and make it my own. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've decided to do. So really the only similarity I would say between me and that artist is the fact that we both use silhouettes a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Around where you live, and I'm sure you have, you know, maybe some art friends in college, but is there an art community around you where, I mean, you can meet up with other artists or, you know, go to galleries and things like that? Or, or is it mostly the artists that you've met online? Oh, there's definitely an art community around where I live. It's yeah. not, Miami's not the only place where yeah. the art scene is happening. Obviously, that's where, like, where the biggest stuff happens. But locally, yeah. there's a bunch of stuff. Um, there's small galleries all over the place. So mm -hmm. there's definitely places you can check out and have yeah. um, art shops everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great. You know, the, the last interview I uploaded, or I uploaded today, uh, she's from Fort Myers. And oh, wow. yeah, yeah, she said the, the same kind of thing that it's, you know, she's not too close to the big cities, but there's. There's a community in, in the, the little towns in, in Florida. I think that's great. Okay. So you've, you've shown work before. Yeah. Um, the, my earliest show when I was, when, excuse me, was when I was in college. Uh -huh. um, that was like a student faculty show. And prior, after that, there was like a period where I didn't make any art. Oh, okay. So I didn't show for maybe like three years. Oh, wow. Okay. And then that's when I started getting back into actually making art. And yeah. since then, I've had two online exhibitions so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. So what caused that uh, that break in between? Was there a reason that you had just stopped creating? Yeah, um, I didn't know what I wanted to make or what I wanted to do. So all the art I was making was just like one-off ideas or yeah. nothing really I was committed to. So I just kind of just fell into a slump. Okay. Plus, um, the nature of my job was really graphic design heavy. So I uh -huh. I, I thought I was going to go down that route and just yeah. be a full-time graphic designer. So then that's when I started feeling really upset and miserable at my job. I was like, yeah. you know what? Now, now's the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. The world has other plans for you. Absolutely. Okay. So I saw you have uh, your open sea and... I think your art, I mean, other than, I mean, making great prints, where would really take to the NFT market? You've got a couple pieces up there. Are you thinking about maybe putting more pieces uh, on OpenSea, listing some more? Yeah, I, I think I might shift how I approach the NFT market. When I mm -hmm. first jumped into it, 
I didn't really know what I was doing and I probably didn't have a great of a game plan. Uh huh. And as I've like watched other artists do it, I've, um, I'm learning a little bit more. So the next time I really like jump into it, Uh huh. I feel like I should have a game plan instead of just Yeah. posting it up there and just kind of doing what the other artists have done. Yeah. But for now, no, I don't think I'll put any new pieces up on OpenSea until I formulated a, a plan. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because, you know, I, I'm not an artist, per se, but when the NFT space kind of really blew up, I was very confused <laughs> about what's going on here. You know what I mean? And I, as I started going to like, you know, the different places where, you know, they host these things and I see all of these great works of art and I noticed that the ones coming from, uh, I'd hate to, uh, I got to choose carefully the way I word this, that I say like an artist like yourself, right? Who's got, who, you know, work is, you know, is incredible. And the NFTs that are selling are sort of stamp cookie cutters sort of <laughs> yeah is that discouraging at all yeah kind of yeah because the way i view viewed all of that is the nft that were really popping off yeah to me that didn't really seem like art that that yeah was just uh-huh like a sticker or yeah uh-huh <laughs> or just it's the same like image but changed through Yeah. like some sort of algorithm so what i really think got that to pop off was just those people have all the time in the world to promote Yeah. it and to send Uh-huh. it to everywhere. Like I don't have that luxury of having Yeah. my entire day dedicated to that. Uh-huh. I can't do that yet. Yeah. Yeah, So cuz I oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. Right? Yeah, cuz I was going to say that as far as like Showing in galleries, or well, I, I can speak on you know the scene in LA a little bit. Sometimes it is who you know, right? Or the people that you know, the connections that you make. And I was so surprised to see that it was the exact same thing, maybe even worse in the in the NFT market. Whereas a lot of these people buying these, you know, particular NFTs, they all know each other. They they Yeah. all they're passing money back and forth. And I thought it's That must, it's so hard for an artist, you know, an artist that, you know, just in their bedroom making art to kind of gain that traction because they don't, they don't know the people like, like they do, you know, they don't have the money like, like these Exactly. people do buying these crazy, you know, generic NFTs. You know, I, I am all in support of actual artists making money through NFTs. That's, I mean, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's another way to, to generate income, but It really does break my heart to see that something that I think is a masterpiece is a fraction of the price of something that is an image copied a hundred different times Yeah. with different clothes on. I, I don't know. It, it, it blows my mind. Yeah, I, I also think that um I guess the general public who don't necessarily have an understanding of what NFTs are kind of Mm -hmm. loop the two sides in like they'll loop Yes. the the generic side of it with the actual artists. So they'll loop them together because they just think it's the same world Yeah. when it's not. It's the Yeah. actual artists who are very skilled and talented but don't have the platform that they need to get where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's insane. Yeah. There was a show out here um, somewhere in Hollywood. It was an all NFT show where they had, you know, screens up on the wall. And I was like, oh, that's that's a great idea. That's that's a, a good way to have a show and promote the NFTs. But it's yeah, I don't know. I mean, eventually it will i think it's going to catch up and the artists the you know talented artists are, are gonna have their come up and soon so i at least i hope as i was going through uh your website and uh reading over the bio and it's something that i had noticed even before i read it just by looking at your pieces is the themes that you have there you know the isolation the uh hold on i wrote this down here oh yeah so it's the principal themes of your art loneliness isolation and freedom And when you do see the pieces, you you really get that sense of of isolation, the sense of you know really being alone in a space that's that's so big, and and you are so small. What was the inspiration behind that? Those sorts of themes in your artwork.
uh, those themes in particular, it was really a reflection of, I guess, how I was feeling at, mm -hmm. at, at certain points in my life. Yeah. Um, not, not necessarily now anymore, but I decided to draw on past feelings and past, I guess, trauma to, mm -hmm. and reflect it into the artwork. So I have a question then, because the, the other theme is freedom. Do you think that, because isolation can be a good and a bad thing, right? It could be good to be alone sometimes because sometimes you need, you know, that time for yourself and yeah. just to think, especially for, for a creator to just have silence and create. But on the other side, being alone all the time, and this is something, you know, I, you know, I can speak on for myself. It's, you can tell yourself that it's okay that I'm alone, mm -hmm. but every now and then you feel it. Yeah. You feel the isolation. You feel like maybe I just want somebody around, me. but you know, maybe don't even tell people about it, you know, just kind of suffer in that silence. Over the years, how has that changed? Because you say it's not the same now. Did you feel sort of an internal switch or things just got better in your life that you no longer felt that way? I think it was more so um, a change in my mindset. Mm. Not to say that those feelings have completely gone away. Like they still linger and are still mm -hmm. present, you know, every now and then. But it was really just a decision to not really suffer in it anymore. Yeah. yeah there's a certain point where you realize, you know what? I'm kind of tired of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's time, it's time for a change. You know, it's, uh -huh. I'm not going to change this by sitting here and just thinking about it all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, all right. So my, my job, my main job, I guess you could say it's, you know, but hopefully, you know, I can be doing this full time. You know, that's, that's the end game, but I, I work alone and I work very long hours and it's very lonely. And, you know, I, and I work an overnight shift, right? So I'm opposite of pretty much the rest of the world, you know? <laughs> and so when I saw those pieces of yours, you know, I, I'm not sure when I, I've been following you for a while, but I, I was at work uh, on my computer and I was looking at it and I, it really struck a chord with me because that's, I could, I could feel, you know, the emotion in those pieces, because that's exactly how I felt at that time when I found your art, you know? So I, I knew when I saw this guy, like, right, I, I'm going to have to reach out to this guy and, and we're going to have to talk about this because I, I really related uh, to your pieces, man. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you had a, a connection to it. And that's the goal of any artist really just to yeah. have some sort of connection from, with your work to the viewer. Yeah. Okay. I had a, a question in particular about, how do you decide because you you the, the use of color in your pieces is I, mean, I, I think it's phenomenal how do you decide on the color palette you're going to use for for each piece is it you just kind of come up with it on the spot or or is it yeah I, i'm not i'm trying to work this is just something more internally that draws you to certain colors for certain pieces most of the time it's really um i just sort of come up with it as i'm making the piece other times I have a very specific um, idea and color palette that I want to go for. Uh -huh. And other times it's just completely random because the nature of my process is it's random. Yeah. And for me, it's a lot more fun and tangible for me to find some sort of solidarity in that randomness. Yeah. And sometimes the colors just come randomly to me. So that's what really happens. Okay. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. The color, the you know, the, the kind of space that's involved in your pieces, man. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I am a fan, truly. <laughs> All right. So what attract you to the, to surrealism? What, what made that want to be your particular style to create? I think it's more so um, based upon my own research, sort of the philosophies of surrealism, sort of tapping into your dreams and your unconscious mm -hmm. mind and mm -hmm. sort of having things on autopilot essentially. Okay. So to me, that really spoke for me and how I approach my work and what my style is. So that's how I became attracted to that. Okay. I want, I want to talk about the online art community for a little bit, because 
All right. So I, I really started getting into, uh, you know, just looking for artists online during the pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love going to museums and galleries. Everything was closed. So I found, I think Twitter is usually where I, I find most, most of the artists. Cause there are a lot of great, just little communities of artists. Is, do you, do you find yourself, well, well first, are you a part of any of these, you know, particular groups on on Twitter because I think I found you on Twitter and having artists from all over the world that you can connect with and you know share art with has that been helpful to you in your career oh yeah absolutely but when I first started um on the online art community it's it was pretty daunting because yeah. it's just basically a small fish in such a gigantic ocean <laughs> yeah and Really, I discovered that if you just interact with people and other artists and that really helps with your own with your own work, because then if you mm -hmm. connect, if you connect with other artists, and they connect with you, then they can share your work. And yeah, mm -hmm. I've definitely become a part of the online community. I'm in like a couple of group chats and we all yeah. talk and share our own work and just lift each other up and try to mm -hmm. get our work to any anywhere possible. Yeah, no, that's a great. Yeah, that the the Twitter art community to me. Is, is probably the best, even more so than like IG or anything like that, because in my experience, you know, looking for artists to interview or just, you know, scrolling through through art pages, it's very supportive. The artists are very supportive of each other, you know, and it's it's really nice to see, especially in in a world where you could be competing against these people. You know, I, it's a little different online because it's not like, you know, you're talking to someone that's next door to you, you know, trying to get into the same sort of space that you are. But it's um, it's really nice to see that people in the same field support each other when the goal is, I mean, not necessarily to sell art. I mean, that's, you know, you, you want to sell your art, but I, I, I do think it's more about creating. But when everyone is in sales and they're all so nice to each other because you don't get that in a lot of other yeah. uh, and in all other fields. I think there's also a a, um, a dark side to the online art community. Mm. Um, not from my experience. I've yeah. had positive experiences in it so far. But just yeah. from what other artists have told me and other things yeah. I've seen, it can be real nasty. Like, people can be real mean to each other. There's a lot yeah. of gatekeeping and a lot of drama. It's like, the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, we're here to create. You know, this is this is art. Okay. We We kind of talked about this a little bit. Like, I said the life of an artist can be can be a lonely one right it's you know because you no matter what you have to have time to create by yourself and the hours can fluctuate especially if you have another job you have to find the time to do it what do you do to keep yourself motivated when maybe you're alone a lot of the time trying to trying to get things done i think it's really my friends because I have my close friends. They're also artists. Oh, okay. so oh that's that's good. <laughs> seeing them create and seeing them like get get a win every now and then and like yeah. show with something amazing. I'm like, oh, Danny, okay, I gotta I gotta get back into it. Like yeah, my friends yeah. show me up. I gotta I gotta, <laughs> yeah, I gotta get back yeah. in there. Uh huh. Yeah, that friendly competition. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that. exactly what it is. Uh huh. Oh, that's great. It's good to have close friends that are artists, man. That's that's super dope. Okay. Was there ever a time that you felt that, and, and maybe not related to, you know, you know, you're saying about your job and, you know, and that's the path you're going to do, but was there ever a time when you were thinking about calling it quits on art? Hmm. I don't think so, because in that three-year span I talked about, I was hmm. doing graphic design and that still is art. Sure. Another type type of art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um i don't think i could ever see myself quitting yeah that's good uh -huh. it's just okay. what i was meant to do I, w I i asked this question to to the last artist i interviewed and, and and i noticed it with your art too how especially being a young artist you do see a lot of recreations of you know photos of like famous people or you know movie characters and things like that but you don't have anything like that and I always find that interesting with young artists because a lot of people, you know, new in the game, 
they'll create a piece that's for sure going to get looked at because the person is so famous and they have a lot of fans. Now, your art doesn't really, I say, maybe doesn't take to that. But was that a conscious decision to say, OK, I'm just going to do my art, you know, the way that I want to do it. I'm not going to maybe create something that's, I don't know, maybe not fulfilling to make just because I know people are going to like it. I don't think it was a conscious decision. I think I always knew I wanted to take take it that way. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if you're making something specifically just for people to like it, or yeah. it's 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 not it's not the right way to do it. Like it should be yeah. fulfilling to you. It should be something that you really want to make, regardless if somebody likes it or not. Yeah, you know, just throw it up there. If they like it, cool. If they don't, whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, would you say that? you know, things that are like, well, just popular culture in general doesn't really have an impact on the way that you create? None at all. None whatsoever. None of the things I've, I've seen in pop culture really affect my art particularly well. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe sort of some things, maybe like anime or, or film. Oh, sure. Video games, things like that. Particularly, I guess, color palettes. I can probably draw from that, but Mm -hmm. Other than that, there's really nothing in pop culture in pop culture that really affects my work. Yeah. Okay. All right. So being born and raised in South Florida, if you could choose a place to go, you know, I mean, not forever, like for a little while to go and create art, where would you go? It's mm, a good question. Maybe somewhere in Europe. Um, yeah. maybe maybe Italy is a cliche answer, but I would probably want to go to Italy. Yeah, uh huh. I mean, just the history of all types of art in Italy. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, there is a here in a in Southern California. The, we have this thing called the Getty Villa. It, it's a Getty Museum, but it's in the style of a of an ancient Roman villa. And so they've got all of these, you know, ancient, you know, Roman artifacts and sculptures and pottery and things like that. And every time I go there, I, you know, I, I try to put myself in a place where, you know, it feels it makes it feel like, you know, you're you took a time machine and, and went yeah. back, you know, to those Coliseum days. So I understand that answer. That, that's a really good answer, because, I mean, so many different styles and artists, and you know, methods to create came out of that place. So. Yeah, Italy is Italy is a good one. Okay, I had a question about some of the names that that you give your pieces, and, and you know, and maybe you, I mean we kind of talked about the themes in it, but there was I, I wrote down some here in particular. Okay, um, yeah, like null and void, can't help the things you long for, rebirth, genesis, awaken, and I noticed a theme of sort of isolation and then a resurgence is this maybe indicative of you know a certain time period in your life is it is there something more to the name than it just being a name uh yeah um, for me naming a piece is like my favorite part uh -huh. i always like leave it for the last thing and I'll, I literally will spend like days. <laughs> like I won't, I won't release anything until I've had a name for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, it's like naming your child for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. I get it. In terms of reflective of, uh, of certain things in my life, possibly, um, I never really thought about it in that way. I mm -hmm. sort of really just thought of it like, the name is the cherry on top of the piece. Oh, you have the I piece. See. It's you have the piece itself, and you have all the colors and the composition and the figures, what have you. Mm -hmm. But the name really ties it all together. Yeah. So the name has to like be perfect. Yeah. It has to really represent what the piece is mm -hmm. for me, at least. Okay. Maybe subconsciously, um, it could be representative of some sort of rebirth or some mm -hmm. sort of change in how I think or how I feel about myself. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I tend to overthink things <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to art. So, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I, sometimes I, maybe I pick up on patterns that aren't there, but yeah, I, I had to ask. All right. <laughs> that's a good, but that's, that's good that you noticed that. I didn't really even notice it until you mentioned it. I was like, oh, wow, um, he's actually right. There is a yeah. <laughs> copy in the names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't know. I, I love artists and I love art. You know, I, I grew up uh, from a you know, time in my life around a lot of artists in, in an actual art district. And, you know, it's it's not an art district anymore, which is, you know, kind of upsetting. I mean, they still call it the arts district, but artists can't afford to live there anymore. It's a it's a oh, it's an absolute shame, man. And this is a place where in downtown LA where I, I had been going to because my dad's an artist. Like I've been going to this sort of art neighborhood you know since i could remember and then we actually ended up living there and to see artists getting priced out and when you know before when people were going there it was so cheap to live because i mean it's not it's a better part of town now but we're talking about i don't know if you know if it, i'm sure you've heard of skid row where you know there's a lot of home okay well i'm talking about like a walking distance to skid right. row right like it's it wasn't an ideal place until hipsters moved in and and, <laughs> and changed all of that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that now, because I, I do feel like there is, is a maybe like a renaissance going on with, with a lot of young artists. Do you feel that artists in this generation are now getting the respect that they deserve as it as a form of, you know, like entertainment, like singers, actors? Do you feel like artists are now coming up to that sort of level and then being looked at the same? Because, I mean, I feel it should have, you know, it should always be that way. But do you think that now, you know, maybe things have changed or, or things are a little different? Yeah, I don't think things are a little different. I mean, it's kind of hard for me to say because I only had really my perspective and mm -hmm. I guess a couple of other artists' perspective on, on that entire thing. Mm -hmm. But I think now with especially the internet, it's, it can be incredibly easy for an artist to, to get the credit and fame that they deserve, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it really depends on the collectors or the galleries that are, that are looking for that sort of thing. Yeah. So I, I definitely think there's, that it has changed and it probably will change again in another 10 years. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, true. Yeah. I definitely think that artists are definitely are up at a new level now. Yeah. 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 I think so too. And, and also with, you know, like there's a lot of, let's say like young entertainers that collect art and talk about, you know, collecting art, you know, like, like Drake does. I know like my favorite artist, this guy named Mark Bradford, who didn't sell anything big until he was like 39 years old, you know, he was already full grown adult. Yeah. And Beyonce and Jay-Z have several of his pieces and you know this guy's all over the world so yeah I, I think other entertainers giving you know a name to these artists you know is 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 also helpful and and plus the internet you know I mean they, there's been no other time that I can see your work you're in Florida I could see someone else's work in Europe or you know in Asia somewhere it's it's a beautiful thing <laughs> Okay. If you weren't an artist or you didn't do, you know, graphic design, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Huh. That's a great question. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe something performance related because I remember as a kid, anytime there was a mirror anywhere I was, I would just like dance in front of it. Yeah. Uh my mom has even told me that I would do that. Like, you know, like at, at, a, at a dentist's office, I, would, <laughs> I saw a mirror and I didn't care. I would just <laughs> get in front of it and just like perform for the entire like uh -huh. patients that's just waiting there. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I guess if, um, if I was unfettered and um, about myself as an adult, if I didn't do art, I'd probably do something like maybe performance related. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So a lot of artists that I know, they do other sort of artistic hobbies. You know what I mean? It's 
like a lot of musicians, DJs, things like that. Is there anything else that you do besides art to kind of let the creativity come out of you? I watch movies a lot. Yeah. Um, play video games a lot, probably more yeah. than I should. <laughs> um, that that really helps because there's there's a lot of amazing aspects about movies and video games that can really inspire you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like dialogue, music, the cinematography, or yeah. like action in a game. It's mm -hmm. that's what that's what I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. All right. So so with your graphic design have you ever worked on anything that because I, I know you get a job you know kind of says okay do this we want this but has there been a, you know a certain assignment that you had that was really fulfilling just as an art uh an aspect of art as opposed to okay this is just my job yeah i think so um one of the jobs i had um I had to create flyers and promotional material for our company's events. And we worked with artists a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I worked at a college basically, and I worked with their gallery. Okay. So one of the promotional things I've done was promote and create flyers for an, an up and coming artist who's showing in our gallery. Okay. So it was kind of surreal for me. Mm -hmm. It was like, Oh wow, there's I'm, I'm promoting and helping this artist yeah. get shown and, promote his work and it was probably some of my best graphic design work in my opinion okay so i i was really fulfilled by that i was like wow yeah. i actually like did that like it's it's all over the campus oh uh -huh. yeah yeah uh -huh. my boss approved it like right away so i was yeah. like yeah this is great like I'm, uh -huh. i can't i nailed that yeah <laughs> i killed that <laughs> i like that that was dope okay so what what would you say is more fulfilling you know, with your job, creating, you know, any sort of piece for, you know, whatever needs to get done and, you know, having it approved and, you know, the work goes out or finishing an original piece of yours and getting the positive feedback from that. Hmm. Out of those two options, I would say, finishing an original piece and getting the feedback from that. But I've also had fulfilling experiences on the other side where I've okay. completed a job and my boss has told me that, that it, it looks great, it looks good. And my boss actually told me one time that her boss, which is basically, you know, both of our bosses that he saw one of my, my promotion, promotional material, like who's making this stuff? This looks great. And I was like, yeah. Oh, Okay, I'm getting <laughs> noticed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I, uh, I think it was it would be more of like a hodgepodge kind of. Okay. But now it's really um about the original work and just actually finishing and seeing an, an idea actually laid out in front of me the way I, I imagined it. That's okay. what's more feeling for me at least. Okay. Okay. All right. Who would be your dream collector? that that you would want to give a piece to who who would say someone came to you and say okay i want to buy a few of these pieces who what person would it be that would make you just lose your mind that's a good question i'm not too privy to any sort of like big name collectors i haven't really delved into that to that uh -huh. world myself but i guess i would have to say somebody like chance the rapper i'm a okay. huge fan of his work yeah and if but hypothetically speaking, if uh -huh. he were to ever like you know hit me up and want to collect some work of mine, I would like be bouncing off the walls. That would be yeah. incredible. Like I found his music through one of my friends of mine, and like it, it completely changed the type of music that I listened to. I used to listen to um, mostly rock and a little bit of rap and hip hop now and then, but then I found his work. I'm like, oh yeah, like forget that all all that other stuff. This is this yeah. is what yeah yeah. Yeah, it's different. Okay. If you were to hit me up, like that, that would be it. I have a hat of his. Like I've been to a concert. Like I'm, I'm a fan. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, and he seems like a really good guy too. Yeah, every interview I've ever seen of him, like, seems like a solid dude. Yeah, real chill, real. I love his mm -hmm. vibe. When the pandemic hit, and I, I'm not sure how, uh, like, the situation was in Florida. I mean, as far as lockdowns go. 
I mean, if I remember correctly, it, it wasn't as severe as other places. Like here we got locked down, you know what I mean? Like they, they closed a lot of stuff down. But did the pandemic have any effect on the way you created art? Like, did it make you create a lot more, be a lot more prolific? Or did it maybe get you a little bit stuck because things around you were closed? You couldn't have those, you know, worldly experiences that you did before. Um, I don't think it really affected me too much. Like, if I remember correctly, before, we were locked down too. Like, we couldn't go anywhere for, for a wow. while. I think right when the lockdown happened, I wasn't creating as often or as much mm -hmm. as I wanted to. So in that time, just being in my room all the time, I didn't really have much inspiration, motivation mm -hmm. to really create anything. I was really just chilling and just goofing off. I couldn't go yeah. nowhere. So yeah, uh -huh. all I could do was just play video games with my friends or watch a movie or whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, I, there wasn't really room for creation for me, at least. I just wasn't really focused on that. Yeah. Like I said, it was really up until last year where sort of my my own renaissance and, and wanting to create really happened. The pandemic really was just a, a thing that happened to me, really. Okay. Okay. All right. So so how much longer do you have in college? And And, and I ask that because like once you're all done with that, assuming you have nothing that's like tying you down could you see yourself leaving florida when that's all done mm, that's a good question uh in terms of school i think maybe two years left i've been going very very slow because i don't want no debt yeah yeah, yeah. it's good it's a good idea <laughs> i'm still so, paying for school <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to be like just paying that for the rest of my life yeah um possibly leaving florida maybe um i don't know all my friends and family are here i don't know if, yeah. if i'm ready to do that yet okay maybe yeah. maybe if i just say screw it maybe go somewhere like i don't know georgia or yeah new york if i'm feeling really risky yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that that's a whole nother a whole nother scene <laughs> that's funny uh, yeah you know i would i would love to go i haven't been to florida yet but i would love to go to florida I would love to go check out, you know, some of the art stuff down there. Yeah, Miami is where like the big art scene's happening. Like art is everywhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I'm a I mean, I'm a big city dude, you know what I mean? Like I I grew up in the, the heart of LA, like LA proper, you know what I mean? So I, I love the busyness and the noise, you know, and the excitement. So how far how far are you from Miami then? Are you uh like with no traffic? On a good day, probably like 35, 40 minutes. Oh, okay. On, on a really bad day, probably an hour. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's it. It's, that, it's that's the traffic that really keeps me from it. Like, I cannot stand it. And <laughs> you don't understand. Miami drivers are horrible. They are <laughs> terrible, bro. Uh -huh. like, they don't, no turn signal. They'll cut you off. No, no hesitation, bro. It's, it uh -huh. brings a whole new level of anger out of me. I've never seen it's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, don't come to LA, man. That, oh, I heard it's worse. <laughs> I heard it's real bad. Oh, the traffic. Like, there's some freeways. Like, if it's a certain time of day, like I'll, I'll take the streets. I don't. I don't care. I don't care how far it is. I'm not sitting on 405 for an hour and a half to go five miles. No way, man. Bro, same, same. <laughs> I'll, I'll avoid the highway if I have to. Yeah. Uh huh. Or is there a and say like a a, a certain pattern or. or you know, something that you do when you start creating to kind of get you in that zone? Like, do you listen to music or, you know, maybe just need some silence beforehand? Like, how do you prepare to create? Hmm. I think so far it's been like different for every piece that I made. Most of the time I listen to music, kind of just like let them let the music sort of influence my actions and my decisions. Other times I'm just like complete silence and just in my head, just yeah. staring at the screen, just like, okay, just going at it. Yeah. Other times I'll just maybe talk to some friends for a little bit, just sort mm -hmm. of just sort of get my mind sort of yeah. sort of going instead of just come straight up off of like bed or something, just okay. not having really any sort of ideas. That's mm -hmm. how I really start um my process. Okay. Or right, do you let's say like locally, right? 
I know online you, you kind of talked about the gatekeeping online. Have you experienced any of that like locally in, you know, galleries around you or, you know, places that you'd like to show? Um, I don't think so. Maybe because I'm just not privy to any of that stuff. Like when I go to a gallery or a museum, I just focus entirely on the artwork and what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. not necessarily paying any attention to the type of art that's shown. But I feel there might be some some gatekeeping, maybe based on any curatorial biases, like, oh, maybe the curator wants this specific kind of work shown and yeah. this sort of style and, and not really giving anything else a chance. Yeah. So there there probably is some that I'm just not really aware of, but I'm I'm pretty sure there is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, any sort of entertainment uh creative in Denver with that competition comes the gatekeeping you know yeah. like people have their kind of have their crew you know what i mean and i that kind of stifles the creativity in my mind you know because it's great you've got uh, maybe a couple artists that you like to show but it's it does no favors to the art world to keep showing the same thing over and over again you know i mean yeah. gotta give people a chance you know I will say that in one of my old jobs when I was helping um, at that college, helping the the curator with the student show, mm -hmm. we did make it a point to not really include like anime or cartoon kind of art. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I I guess really because that's what every a lot of students were doing, and we wanted to see oh. other skill sets and other sure. other mediums. Really, I mean, not to say there's anything wrong with anime. Yeah. Or I, lo I love anime yeah but i guess i can see where that bias is coming from really just to i can understand why anime art wouldn't really belong in a gallery sure yeah like, i can uh -huh. totally understand that yeah but yeah it's, again i also agree with you that it's, it's stifling some sort of creativity and not yeah. giving it a chance to showcase what they can do yeah no but yeah you're absolutely right though because i mean you don't walk into you know many gallery and see you know anime paintings or yeah you know art on the wall so i mean that makes sense yeah but um but yeah say so that's the great thing about you know about la uh in particular or even I, I would probably assume most other big cities is that there are so many different types of galleries i mean just here in particular right i mean i could speak from my own experiences that you can go to hollywood or you go to the west side like santa monica or culver city or you know places like that and you could find a gallery that fits your taste. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, all over, you know, a bunch of different cities. And, and I think that's, that's a beautiful thing, man. I, I like to, you know, kind of end on this question a lot. What would you say to an artist that's maybe thinking about giving up, maybe comparing themselves to other artists that, you know, maybe doesn't even do the same exact sort of style that they do and are really just beating themselves up and thinking about giving up. What advice would you give to someone like that? I would say to really only focus on what your path is. Comparing yourself to another artist does you no favors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. And you're only really hindering yourself and you're, you're putting that those other artists on a pedestal Mm -hmm. and that does that's not really helpful to you you really need to just understand that everyone's path is different mm -hmm. and that yeah. while someone may succeed earlier than you yours will come soon you just you just got to keep trying like yeah cannot give up on your dream it's it, you're chasing it for a reason right yeah yeah so you uh -huh. just got to keep going just don't don't ever let another artist success or what they're doing really hinder what you're doing yeah. it's you, you'll get yours one day yeah. you gotta keep yeah. going you know this mm -hmm. you'll get yours it'll yeah. take time it's gonna take time it's gonna be hard it's gonna be really hard but you, you just gotta see it through yeah 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 that's, that's great advice you know i, I just thought of another question i, I said that was the last one <laughs> <I'm alive>. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so you you've got the print store up um have you ever thought about maybe you know branching out because like I said, I, 
I love your designs. And, uh, you know, whenever I see an art piece or, you know, a collection like yours, I think about, oh, well, you could do this with it. That, that. You ever thought about maybe other sort of merchandise, like, you know, uh, like clothing in particular? Yeah, I have thought about it. And my friends and and, and my brother have talked about it, too. Oh, man, you should, like, do some clothes or something. That'd be pretty yeah. dope. I yeah. thought about it. And I, I've made a couple mock-ups of things, you know, just yeah. to see what, what it could possibly look like. I'm open to that idea. Um, okay. Again, it's not just something I can just like roll out. I got to sure. have a game plan for sure. It's just, yeah. I, I can see myself doing that. I, and I just got to yeah. just commit myself to making a plan and seeing it through and, you know, making, yeah. finding the right people to help me out with that. So, yeah. I can see it as a possibility. I'm okay. not really opposed to the idea of, I guess, mm. commercializing my work. Oh, sure. I see. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh huh. I understand that um, it may not be viewed well, but, you got to make yeah. the money somehow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, I, I don't know. It's something about the colors that you use, man. I, it's, I don't know. Like I said, I, I overthink these things when it comes <laughs> to right. art. But, it's, but yeah, I, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I could see I could see a lot of things with this. But but like you said, it's, it's one thing about staying true to who you are as an artist as opposed to commercializing everything yeah. and, and making everything about money because when it exactly. becomes all about money i think it, it, it kind of takes something out of your soul you know what i mean exactly and that's all you become at that point yeah yeah uh-huh or is there a particular piece of yours that's that's your favorite something <laughs> that uh i want to say cradle to intern to eternity i don't yeah. know if you've seen that one it's yeah. like the all gold one yeah uh-huh. i think that one's probably my favorite um Probably because of the simplicity of it, because yeah. a lot of the pieces before and after that were like really popping with color and lots of like organic mm-hmm. shapes all over the place. And that one was just yeah. Yeah. very simple and to the point. And yeah, I really loved it. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about that one, too. A lot of people yeah. have said that um, like the little bubble in the figure at the bottom was like a belly button. Oh. Like I <laughs> uh, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. But yeah, a little bit. Uh-huh. What are y'all talking about? Like, I don't see no belly button. I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of see, <laughs> yeah. see where y'all coming from. That's uh, probably my favorite one. Okay, yeah, because I was I was going through them. Like, okay, so I was trying to think. Okay, which one do I like the best? I, I couldn't pick one. You know, like you have one called to bits, one called awaken. Oh man, just you know, excellent, excellent pieces. The uh, hold on, there was one more in particular that that kind of blew my mind. Oh, the uh, color me orange is the mm-hmm. name of it. Oh, yeah. man. great piece, man. Great, oh, thank piece. you, thank you. Okay, those are right. the I'm um, uh-huh. sorry, the, the color me orange was like one of the first couple pieces I've done when I started the online art community. That was like okay, the first couple ideas I had. So, thank you for really liking that one. Like, yeah. I, I I'm kind of my opinion has changed on that one as time uh-huh. has gone on, but I'm, I'm really glad you like that one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a great piece. Uh, okay, have you, but now these all, you know, sort of kind of, you know, fit a theme. Have you ever thought of maybe making a specific, particular, you know, like like a series? Like, let's say you had a show, right? Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, you, this is all you. You make up the theme for the show. You, it could be, you know anything you want but it, it's it got to be somewhere in you know in, in the similar atmosphere what would you create that show around that's a that's a good question um i have made a series before um that color me orange piece you mentioned that was actually part of a of a bigger series i think it was four or five pieces i think all dealing with color uh-huh. um and in terms of how i had a show maybe maybe sort of the theme revolving around nightmares. Oh, okay. Because actually the piece that I'm currently working on revolves around um, a nightmare that I had when I was younger. Uh-huh. And I think that would be a really cool idea sort of to just yeah. bring those nightmares and those really weird dreams I had as a kid and just yeah. sort of make a series about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that. All right. All right, Don Gabe. This has been great. Where? Oh, do you have anything else you'd like to say? uh to the people watching this interview uh no man thanks for having me this has been yeah. really fun I'm, I'm really glad you, you invited me on i, I yeah. can't wait to see the actual the video when it's done oh yeah yeah and this will be an easy edit too i'll probably be done in a couple days uh so where can the people find you what do you want the, the people to reach out 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram at underscore Don Gabe. And you can find me on Twitter at underscore the Don Gabe. And you can also check out my website, www.dongabe.com. All my entire portfolio, my bio is all there. You guys can check it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and guys, please do uh, check out the print store too. Absolutely phenomenal artist, Don Gabe. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.